This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. I'm with the project that we're writing, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this content from the bottom of the Amazon bot pi function or file that we've been working with just because this was here it's kind of a test bed what we want to eventually do now is we want to instead of hard coding this list from a python list that we have in this file we want to read the list of items from our spreadsheet so what we want to do is we want to read the items here from our spreadsheet and process those items instead so i'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this as this was just kind of testing going to make sure we save that and then we're going to go back to our product price file that we were working with in the second video. So here what I want to do is I kind of want to do some things for organization and that's mostly just so we have kind of a, a nice flow of uh, adding different components we make things more modular so let's just go ahead and wrap this in a class in a similar way that we did with the Amazon bot. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, the name of a class we'll, we'll call this price updater it's going to take an object and then what we're going to do is we're going to create our constructor so let's go ahead and say underscore init with two underscores it'll take self since this is a member of the class and then also what I intend to pass into this constructor is the name of the spreadsheet so I'll say spreadsheet spreadsheet name so in this case the spreadsheet name is just the name of the sheet that we are actually modifying so in this case it's this product price uh, name right here. So I want to instantiate an object of the price updater class that's going to be associated to the name of the spreadsheet that we're modifying. So going back up here, uh, let's go ahead and move some of these things inside of that constructor since this is going to be necessary for it to actually access that spreadsheet. So let's move these things, we'll indent them by uh, into the constructor. So let's go ahead and get rid of that extra line. So we have this scope the credentials the client so again that gives us the window into the uh, spreadsheet so we can access it and then instead of actually just hard coding this product price in here what i want to do is i just want to pass in the spreadsheet name so spreadsheet name is going to be replaced by that instead of the string that we had from before so the other thing that i want to do is i want to have elements or class variables that are going to correspond to the numbering of the columns that we have in our spreadsheet. So for instance, if I go back to our spreadsheet, the item column is the first column, price is the second, frequency, which we're not doing anything with now, is the third, and so on and so forth. So I want some way of when we manipulate data, when we read it from the spreadsheet or read to it, to write to it, we're going to want to know what place in the spreadsheet do we want to actually write that data to and it's going to be kind of nice for us to have a shorthand where we know that the first item or the first column corresponds to the item the, f the second column corresponds to the price and so on so let's go ahead and go back and just create some class variables that are going to provide us kind of a shorthand or a reminder as to what each of those are going to correspond to so we'll say self the item call is equal to one self dot price call is equal to two the frequency that was equal to three the url so url call is equal to four and then the product so self dot product name column is equal to five so again these just kind of serve as reminders as to what these columns correspond to if you change the ordering of the elements in those columns obviously this will have to be updated as well so let's go down and create a class function that's actually going to um, modify well it's going to run our amazon bot and it's going to get those items from the spreadsheet and process those through our bot so in order for us to take advantage of this file that we wrote in the previous video we want to make sure first of all that if we do let's do a clear and do an ls so if we do an ls notice that we have the amazon bot.py secret and then also the product price.py file in this folder so you want to make sure that if you're doing it and following along with me, you want to make sure that all of these files are in the same folder. Because what we're going to want to do inside of this product price file is we're going to want to import the uh, class from the Amazon bot file that we wrote in the previous video. So going back up here, let's say, let's say from Amazon bots, so that's the name of the file. So I call the Amazon bot pi. We want to import the class 
Amazon bot. So that is the name of the class. If I go back up here, that's what I'm importing. So I'm saying from the file Amazon underscore bot, import this class. So that's going to allow us to make use of that class inside of this file. So let's go down here. And what we're going to want to do is create a class function, which we will essentially have, uh, let's call it process item list. So oops, let's get rid of that. So process item list. And what this is going to do is it's just going to be a class function. So it's just going to take self. And the first thing we want to do is we want to extract those items from our list. So going back to the spreadsheet, we want to take all of these guys from the spreadsheet that we have connected, get those, put them into a list, and then process that list. So if we go back to our code, the way that we can do that is we can say items is equal to self dot sheet dot call values. So just to kind of go back here, one thing that we need to do as well is we need to say self dot sheet. So self dot sheet is going to allow us to refer to this sheet object that we've created uh, here, and it's going to allow us to refer to it within the class. So it's going to be a class variable, an object that corresponds to our window to access the spreadsheet. So when I say down here, I'm grabbing the items from that list. And how am I accessing those items? I'm specifying that I want to get them from some column. So I want to get all of the column values, all of the values in a particular column. And the column that I want to get that value from is self item call. So basically, this call values function is a built in function that uh, gspread provides. And that's going to allow us to get values in a particular column. And you can specify by a number, what column you actually want to get. So that's going to give us the entire first column. Now I don't want to get one element of that. So I don't I want to ignore the first element of this column because otherwise it would give me this whole thing everything but I kind of want to just get the items underneath the heading so what I want to do is ignore that first heading so going back to the code instead of getting the list that corresponds to the entire column I want to ignore the first one so I'm just going to start off the indexing from one instead of zero so that's going to ignore the heading of the title items and it's just going to read below so now that we've got the items from the spreadsheet, what we're going to want to do is instantiate an object of our Amazon bot that we created from the previous video using the items list that we extracted from our spreadsheet. So we can say Amazon underscore bot is equal to Amazon bot and we'll pass in because this takes a list of items, we'll pass in the items that we extracted from our spreadsheet here. And then once we have that, what we can do is we can say prices, URLs, names, because these are all the objects that are returned from the search items function, just going back there, the search items function returns to us these three things here. So prices, URLs, and names in that order. So we're going to want to say prices, URLs, names is equal to Amazon, oops, is equal to Amazon underscore bot that search items. So that's going to call that function. And then once we do that, we want to uh, actually update our spreadsheet with those things that we've acquired. So we've gotten the item list from our spreadsheets. So we've read from that, we've passed that into our Amazon bot. So it goes and gets those items, stores them in respective lists. And now we want to process those lists and put them into the spreadsheet. So going down here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to, let's say print out a message just so we know where we are in the code. We'll say updating spreadsheet. And then here we're going to want to loop through the lists. So we know that the length of prices, URLs, and names should all be the same because even if we don't store the price or the URL, we have kind of a not available element in that list as a placeholder. So I'm going to loop through one of those three lists. It doesn't matter which one because they're all the same size, but uh, that's just, if, if you're curious as to why I'm writing a loop that's just looping through one, that's, that's why. So I'm gonna say for I and range length of prices, so again, you could do names or URLs here. It really doesn't matter since they all should be of the same length. I'm going to say self.sheet.update cell. So again, this is another function that's provided from gspread that you can use on a sheet object. So we've created the self.sheet object, which corresponds to the sheet that we're modifying. And this update cell function is going to take three parameters. So it's going to take the row column and also the thing that you want to put in that particular row and column. So in this case, what I want is I want to modify the I plus second row. So the reason for that is because we're looping through uh, from zero to the length of the prices. 
So zero is not uh, the way that we access the first column of a spreadsheet. It starts off as one. And we also want to ignore the heading. So that's where the second thing that we're ignoring comes from. <clears throat> so we want to ignore zero because we don't want to start the loop at zero for the spreadsheet access. And we also want to ignore the heading. So that's why we're doing I plus two for that. So the next thing we want to uh, update the respective column. So we want to update the price in this case. And we know that the price column can be accessed by the class variable that we set before. And what do we want to put there? We want to put the ith element of the prices list that we got back from our bot. So we'll say prices of i. And we essentially want to do the same thing for the URLs and also for the uh, the product name as well. So I'll just cut that there. So that's replacing that with the URL and then product name uh, column. So we want to make sure that we're updating the appropriate column here. So again, URL column here, and then we want to make sure that we're doing the right list. So in this case, this is called URLs and this one here was called names. So we're just updating all of the cells in our spreadsheet with the relevant information. And then we will uh, exit and that, that should be that. So going back down to the main component of this program, let's go ahead and remove uh, this here. Let's just get rid of that. And let's go ahead and say price updater. So we're going to create an object of a price updater class. And we're going to pass in the name of the spreadsheet that we want to modify. In this case, it's product price. So again, what that uh, class does, it's going to take whatever name you give it for the spreadsheet that we want to access it. We know from previous videos that we've set up access to that spreadsheet so we can modify this one. And then once we have that, we're going to process item list. So we're going to say process price updater dot process item list. So we're going to go ahead and process the list. Let's go ahead and write this and let's clear the terminal and let's just go ahead and make sure this actually works. So going back to the spreadsheet here, we see that we have the items and all of these, uh, all of these columns are, are empty. Now, hopefully when we run this, they should actually be filled. So let's go ahead and say Python product price and we'll see what happens. Might not work. So yeah, let's see. So it has no item, has no function process item list. So that would be due to a misspelling. So I want to make sure that we spell things properly. Let's try that again. Go ahead and see if this gets a little bit further, fingers crossed. So I see that the browser is open. It's going to navigate to the page. I'm just going to move this over here so we can actually see if there's any other output. So it says here it's calling the Amazon bot class. It looks like it successfully read the elements from that list because it was able to acquire toothpaste, which was the first element in the uh, spreadsheet from, from Google. So it seems like it clicked on that successfully. It's getting all that information. It's printing that out. So right now it's going to process for uh, toothpaste floss. And I believe there's one more item on there as well. So let's just let it do its thing. It seems like it's uh, processing all of these items properly. Uh, I guess the, the main thing that we want to check here after it's done that is to ensure that once it's processed all of this, that it's actually uh, going to store the content successfully into the spreadsheet. So this is the last item that I think it's going to grab. It's going to grab that information there. We should see hopefully updating spreadsheet message, which we do, and then it ends. So hopefully if we go back to our spreadsheet right here, it seems like it successfully put in all that information. So it looks like it's acquired the prices, the respective URLs. So if we click on this URL for the toothpaste, we notice that it takes us to the proper product going back here. It also seems like it successfully extracted the title, the product name. And then here we just have a very simple macro, which is just summing up the elements of the B column. And that gives us the total there. So that seems to work properly. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to add in uh, sort of an email alert component. So we're going to see that once this is finished updating, if you have a long list, this could take a while, we're going to add another file that's going to allow an email alert. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next